<laughs> Let go. Datpiff.com world premiere. That's the sound of the kids. With no fucks to give. With no luck for shit. Cause they didn't grow up as rich. That's the sound. That's the sound. That's the sound of niggas locked in the pen. Doing a bid with more time than they should give. That's the sound of a no press nation. Tired of chasing villains that don't got no faces. That's the sound of a nation that don't got no patience for faux proclamations. Warlocks and churches and sacred locations. The sheriffs, the clansmen, the judges, and mason. Not to be biased and not what your faith is. But how do I trust my own country and state that's more loyal to Satan than their own occupation? The system is rigged. If I vote, will I change it? Green will consume us with no moderation. Blame for a beast. I'm not sure I created. I'm not sure I'm created, like I'm inside a game, I'm not sure that I'm playing. It's a whole operation, whether it's real or whether they staged it. Shit gets so tense when I go out to places, if I fuck around and sneeze in the air, I could break it. And people feel so violated, you feel what I'm feeling before I can say it. Before I can step in the studio to lay it. I know what my role is, I know I ain't basic. But I guess the truth hurt, I guess that's why they butt hurt, all the secrets that I unearthed, no stone left unturned, to learn to fly you gotta jump first, I touch the sky that's why I'm sunburned, I changed your life in only one verse, welcome to the seventh pinnacle, somewhere between the metaphysical, the hell is spiritual, I seen hell and hell is digital as well as visual, hell is how they did the aboriginal. Hell is when the innocent get murdered and they don't arrest the criminal. Oh my, oh my God, oh my God, take the steering wheel. But why do something that I ain't intend to do? No interviews, pacing in my living room. I almost gotten into you. You wild and you invented you. the shit like you invincible. People always ask me, geez, why I used to living, dude? Shit, I wonder why I'm living too. Why I'm living too. Why I'm living too. Why I'm living too. Hey, dude. Say what's wrong with me. Shit, what's wrong with you? Cause me, I'm feeling good. Me, I'm in my zone. I look up in the sky. I know this can't be home. And I know I ain't alone. Come on. They try to take it home. Come on. They try to sway the weak. And they try to break strong. Huh. But I'm not a quitter. God's child, not God's dinner. On God, I'm God's dinner. Try to fly to make the plot thicker. Huh. See, the middle class got a lot slimmer. And the upper class got a lot richer. They want to revolt. They want you to riot. They want you to try it. They want to provoke us to keep us divided. But the people are no longer quiet. They said, Bob, they're going to take you out if you keep rhyming this way. <laughs> I say, fuck it. We all going to die anyway. to the tribe man we just in that bob it's banging vibes we don't mind us we just over here being drive nation doing what drive nation do just drive to drop driving up vibing up you know 
our why, how to frame our shape or our breath. What does it mean? We're going to get into it, man. Love to the tribe for vibing me up, man. Love to AD, man, for dropping some pertinent drop that really led us to so much water, man. And love to Isaac, man, for all the drop, man, that's led. You know what I mean? All of us have been flowing through this, man. So, man, the crew, the tribe, the flow, our fan band, everyone staying strong, man, keeping everyone strong, man, higher, man. Love, Shalom to the real one, Hiram, man. Love to Jay Stu, because if it ain't about Jay Stu, it ain't about shit. Let go, man. My man Teach, natural. Medicine man. <laughs> All the family, man. Arthur Scott, what it do, man. Carol Mio. Family, what to do? I'm just giving love to the tribe, man. You know, we do this on the regular, so we take our time because this is our flow. We're not in a rush because we do this on the regular. So if you came over here for some info, this is not your information, Superhighway. Get off of this. Get off the track. We in a wave over here. We keep it wavy. This is a tribe. This is a tribal flow, so, you know, come over here, take off your shoes, respect, man. Show some respect, man, when you walk in the dojo. Wow, wow. Wow, wow. So, yeah, we're going to get to this. I just wanted you to meditate on it, man. Yeah, B.O.B. is banging, man. We'll be back in there. Love to the uh, Instagram family, man. You know, we're tribing up everywhere. The family, uh, indigenous Kiwata. I hope I'm saying that. A1, my man. Good family. Indigenous Kiwata. Love to the sister, uh, Kenya. Kenya, man. She just dropping that drop out there, man. Making it happen. Man, yeah, man, uh, the fam dropped me this link a while back and, you know, made sure I had it, man. I appreciate that, man. He's been just putting it out there, man, keeping the water flowing, man, on the cons, because we're getting back in the press to John, otherwise known as Juan Con, as you know. If you don't, go get that drop. I'm not going to go get it for you. We will be back in press to John. So when you dig on these cons and you dig on these canes, and you say Cain and Khan. Well, you know, you start to start, you know, surfing a certain rocket, man. You start surfing a wave, man. And that's all we do here, man. Surf the wave, ask the pertinent questions. And then from there, we could, you know, we could dig on it. We don't have to be right, you know. It doesn't have to be a prove this or prove me right, you know. It's just a, hey, you know what, man? This is uh, connecting over here. Let's surf it, you know. We've been doing that, man, from the jump, man. Thanks to you. Thanks to Drive Nation being fearless, man, saying, you know, let's go ahead and uh, have our own theory, our own thesis, our own hypothesis. You know, let's put it together as we did, you know what I'm saying? See how the Most High, how that Ruach, that Ruach God and all of us, man, can dig on it together, man, connect above the barrier. And we did it. And we're here. And we got our our site back up, we got our library going, man. All oh, praise the creator. So when we dig on these ancient cons. This is out of a uh, book called The Return of the Serpents of Wisdom by Marx. It says Mark Amaru Pink Pinkham. Pinkham. P-I-N-K-H-A-M. Mark Amaru Pinkham. The Return of the Serpents of Wisdom, man. So belly flopping i'm gonna leave this link and actually link it to the uh drop library uh doesn't even have page numbers on here but i'm gonna leave i'm gonna link it to this exact page so when you pull it up you have it man so pull it up it's right there click on those links man click on the link the ancient con or serpent dynasty all right we'll pause that man because we about to go in on it let's go 
So the evidence, let me get a little bigger here. All right. Okay. So we're just talking about the cons, all right? So let's just surf away, let's surf away, let's surf away. Let's dig on these cons. Remember, we're just talking Preston John, Wong Kong. You heard of Genghis Khan. But Genghis Khan was only the hijack of the cons. But he was also, obviously, well, not, <laughs> many people don't know. But he was melanated. Genghis Khan was a melanated brother. I wonder if we still have that, that painting up of Genghis Khan. Yeah, my brother uh, sent us a wonderful link on our email. I want to try to remember the name. Who was it? My brother, my brother. Let's stick on this together. We're going to get this because this is important. You know what I'm saying? When we get the images, we got to make sure we get it. Let's get into the email first. See if we can dig on this. Right, right, man. Love to everyone that's registering on the site. As soon as you register, it pops up right in my email. So I see, okay, you know, I got a new registration, new registration. Then I pretty much connect that all into our one, our one list there, man. That's the you know drop drop nation VIP, man. And with that, you get the password. Whenever we change it, you get the newest password. So always be able to access the site, man. You be you be right in there, man. Every time, man, because you know we try to be hijack free. You know, we've been hijacked before, so we got to keep, you know, changing our password, making sure that the people that surf in the wave is really surfing the wave, man, and, and that's that. So we don't get, you know, just get all the robots out the way, man. Man, man, man. All right, all right, all right. Let's see, let's see. I'm trying to remember this brother's name. Uh -huh, Kyle's Kyle, is this it right here? Oh, wow, look at that, look at that, we got him, about to God, can we get it bigger, let's go make it download, let's see what we got here, we're just surfing the waves, man, that's what I'm talking about, we take our time, because every step we take, got to be the right step, man, they're going to let me get it big on this one. Okay, okay. 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 We see that. Let me see. Make sure we can see that. All right. Uh, maybe that's a little better. If I, all right. Here we go. This face right here. This is... A portrait of Genghis Khan. Clearly, you see, he is a so called black man. So much so that I even had it in the description. Let me get back to it. All right, there's a description down here. Let's try to get it. This description says Prince Michael. Michael of Sherganov, a Rus Russian prince, was passed between fires. So this was a Rus prince. I uh, connect the Ruses back to the clan Ross, back to the pigs, back to the Mazaka. All of them are Ruses. Even in this painting, they have him painted as a so-called white man. And we found another painting that had him as a melanated man as well. So iconoclasm happened on every level when they were whitening these images. They got Genghis right. They got Tamujan Khan right. And he is clearly a so-called black man. A copper color, <laughs> you know, a copper color man. And this is also supposed to be a copper color man because this is representing a ruse. But, you know, they got it half right on this particular iconoclasm. But Prince Michael of Sherganov. Prince was passed between fires in accordance with ancient Turco Mongol tradition. Batu Khan stabbed him to death for his refusal to do 
obeisance or to obey, you know, to, to bow to Genghis Khan shrine in the pagan ritual. So in their pagan ritual, they were bowing to Genghis Khan shrine. This Rus said, nah, man, I don't bow to no shrines. I'm a Rus. And he got, you know, he got shanked by Batu Khan. And this is Batu Khan shanking him. Now you see him, you know, you know what I'm saying, without the melanin. And up here, Genghis Khan is clearly melanated. So, you know, all of these people are melanated. If you had a real picture of what really went down, everybody in the room was probably melanated. You know what I'm saying? Copper color. These are a family. This is a family affair that was going on. And when it came to Preston John, or who they were calling Wang Khan, now here they say Genghis Khan, K-H-A-N. And then remember when we were digging up the, uh, you know, Columbus coming to see the Grand Khan, it was always spelled with a C-A-N, like Grand Khan or Grand Canyon, Canyon, or the Canary Islands, Canary, Canary Islands, or Canada, Canada. Khan is all over the place. They'll keep saying, oh, it's Cain or Canaan. Well, okay, okay. That's a perspective, but we're surfing the waves, so I guess that makes us a little, uh, a little different, you know. But yeah, man. Okay, so we got Genghis Khan. We got that, man. We keep that up. Keep that up. We know we're just talking about Wang Khan, Preston John. And we'll be right back in it. Oh, those are just small. But let's get it. Wan Khan and Karyats in Mongol Empire. Alright. Wan Khan. Wan Khan. Khan as Prester John. He is Wan Khan. It literally means priest king. Khan is king. Wan Khan. Or excuse me. Wan is king. Khan is priest. It's the priesthood. If you have the Khan, you have the priesthood. Today they call it the Cohen. The Cohen gene. Aaron's priesthood of the Cohen gene, the Cohen's, C-O-H-E-N is really the Khans. The Khans, the Khans, the ancient Khans or serpents, right? So now we're freaked out about serpents because the Christians are freaked out about the serpents because this energy is freaked out about the serpent. But we don't speak English, right? So we never said the word serpent. And as we know, we're only talking about the fiery flying serpent, the fiery flying of Moses' staff, the fiery flying, where we get it, where we get it. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Kitsukoto was <laughs> was white. All right, Dr. Hijack. We're just talking. If, if we're talking white, we're talking pure. All right, in the definition of white, not what you know as a white man today, but just pure. Kitsukoto was pure, gave laws, required penance, strict obedience, had a serpent with green plumage, brazen, fiery, flying serpent in the wilderness, pierced ears like certain slaves. Under the law of Moses, appease God's wrath by sacrifices was associated with the great famine in Egypt, spoke from a volcano in Sinai, walked barefoot, removed his shoes, spawned a golden age, seven years of plenty in Egypt, which has nothing to do with Moses, by the way, <laughs> besides the fact that the view of Hebrews' explanation of Kitsukoto as Moses is inconsistent with the Book of Mormon. Oh yeah, we got the Book of Mormon as a we're trying to relate this Kitsukoto with their Christ. None of the hallmark details associated with Kitsukoto are incorporated into the account of Christ's visit into the bountiful three of Nephi. We're just talking about the fiery flying serpent. And how does that relate to Moses' staff? This is a book called Kitsukoto by D.H. Lawrence, Moses, Moses' serpent in the wilderness. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, and set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, shall live. So this bite of this dragon gave life, not death. So we're talking about a serpent that gives life, energy. We're not actually talking about a serpent, we're talking about a dragon. And we're talking about an energy grid that's being hijacked. We're talking about dragon lines. A dragon grid with dragon lines. We're talking energy, the people of the energy, the people that are holding down the grid, holding down the dragon lines, the dragon people. They got you into snake mode, but they're the snakes. They're the reptiles. They're the venomous snakes. You're the dragons that devour the venomous snakes. You're the energy that devours static. You're the 432 that devours all hijack 440, the McDonald's of frequencies. You're it. I am. We are. We exist. We've been hijacked, erased. Now we're seeing things through a new lens, our perspective, because we can't see through their perspective. When we think of a cross, we're thinking about a crossing, a grid, an energetic crossing, a dragon line, a dragon grid, an energetic crossing, a cross. They hijack cross to mean Jesus? Zeus? No. Your cross is energy. You crossed over into a promised land. This land is on a grid. You are the people of a grid, of the grid. So Moses is serpent in the wilderness. All right, so make thee a fiery serpent. What's a fiery serpent? It's a dragon. We don't speak English. We never said serpent. We never said dragon. We didn't we never said these words. <laughs> So once we dodge the hijack, get out of the English and say, what is it representing? What did we say? What did I say to represent this fiery, flying, so-called dragon that's representing the energy and all the energy points? We're going to get into it. I'm just surfing away with you, man. You know, we're just trying to keep it wavy. Then we'll get into, you know what I'm saying, what's really going down and the symbols. And even here you see a cross. What is this crossing? What is this crossing? What does it represent? Does this got something to do with Jesus? See, everything's been hijacked, man. The hijack's been real. Hell, Genghis, Genghis Khan's been hijacked. Genghis Khan's been hijacked. You got a whole nother picture when you put in Genghis Khan in Google than this melanated brother sitting right here, slim and trim. You got this other, you know, chubby dude with, you know, so-called Ch Chinese Mongol, whatever you want to call it. And this is what they were calling Mongol, man. They were hiding you under the term Mongol, man. And this was a melanated family that was going down. And if they did add over 1,300 years to our timelines, and if they enforced all of their additional 1,300 years on all native lands and all native tribes, then any Messiah they're talking about dying in 30 AD really died in 1330. They added 1,300 years, if that's the case. If you're surfing the wave, did they add time or did they not add time? Yes, they added time. Was it over a thousand years? So we're getting our, we're getting out this uh, time loop is all I'm saying. We're going to get some stuff, man. We're going to get some stuff, man. Genghis Khan, man. I give you. Genghis Khan, man. Love to the brother Dub Styles, man. My brother Kyle for dropping this on us, man. I'm glad we, we had this Khan drop. Again, we're just talking about Khan. We're talking about Wong Kong Presta John. <laughs> Tagru Wong Kong, who was the son of Kurokakus by Ilma Khatun. He said he reigned 1160s to 1240. They added over a thousand years. That means they added over a thousand years to your timeline. That means they pushed everything back. 
for no reason to make you think it was way back. His palace was located at present day Ulaanbaatar and he became blood brother to Yezegi. Genghis Khan called him Khan Etseg, Khan Father. Wang Khan. The Jin Dynasty award, awarded Tagru the title Wang, meaning king. So all the Ong, like Ong or Hong Kong, King Kong. <laughs> I forgot uh, my bro that dropped that on me, man. He said, man, so, so is King Kong literally King Khan? Wang Khan is King Khan, King Kong. So all that King Kong shit is all about Wang Kong, King Kong. So Preston John is King Kong. Who is Preston John? He's King freaking Khan, man. Preston John is your your King Kong. Wang Kong as Preston John. All right. So the ancient Khan or Serpent Dynasty, evidence of the Serpent Dynasty, perhaps even more ancient than Taimokan was discovered in Mexico by Frenchman August Augustus Lep Longjian, the first Western archaeologist to study the Mayan culture in the ruins of Mesoamerica. Le Plongion claims to have been led by Mayan natives through the thick jungles of Mexico to a mausoleum near Chichen Itza, within which were the remnant remains of King Cole. An ancient king of the Khan, King Khan, or Serpent Dynasty. So it was interchangeable. Now they say serpent. We're saying dragon. We're saying fiery flying serpent. Pierce the ears like certain slaves under the law of Moses. We're talking about Moses' staff. Kitsukoto, priest king, Kitsukoto, priest king, was none other than not Jesus, but Moses. Because again, the Mormons were trying to hijack him into being Christ when they came here to try to, they knew they were on the promised land. So they said, oh, that's Jesus. But then they couldn't tie in the serpent stuff into the Christianity because you know, obviously they had their own images and they were flipping the images. And since they were flipping the images, they couldn't connect the serpent to the Jesus. Although we know that Moses' staff turned into this fiery flying serpent. So now you can connect the kids of Kodu to Moses, but not Jesus. Because they had to add a thousand years to squeeze in Jesus. Because you take that back out the picture and you got everything happening recently. Who could this be but Moses, the ancient legislator in Israel, Kitsukoto, was pure, gave laws, required penance, strict obedience, had a serpent with a green plumage, brazen, fiery, flying serpent. See, I had some more kids of cold drop. Wong Khan, man. Press the job, man. Uh, Mormon. Let's see. Mormon. See what this is talking about. Let's see what they're talking about, man. I know that the passage from John's Gospel does not specify a brazen serpent, yet the passage in the Book of Mormon does. And this is this because Joseph is composing that passage 
had just referred to the account of Quetzalcoatl in, in Ethan Smith's book, which does, which does use that term, it should be further noted that Numbers 28.8 of the King James Version of the Bible, the version that Joseph otherwise used, used the term serpent of brass rather than brazen serpent. And that 2 Kings 18.4 uses the term brazen serpent. And this Joseph was following Ethan Smith's wording rather than that of the Bible. By including that passage in which the brazen serpent is compared to Jesus. Uh-oh. They're trying to figure this. <laughs> the Mormons is trying to figure this serpent thing out. How can they connect this Kitsukoto? Because he's the truth. He's Joshua. Kitsukoto is Joshua. Not Moses. Joshua. And they're hijacking and creating a new Joshua, a new Yeshua, a new Jesus. Because they had to add 1,300 years to do it. And force it on all native people, on all indigenous lands, all indigenous people had to get this time added to them and put in this time loop. And their Joshua, who is Kitsukotu, is hijacked and turned into Jesus. And here comes Zeus. Here comes Zeus. Here comes Thoth. That train's never late. Joseph perhaps thought he could prepare the way for an eventual use of the legend of Kitsukoto, the serpent of green plumage, as evidence for the coming of Christ to the new world. He had to try to tie in Kitsukoto, man. They could. Look, Kitsukoto plays, man. He might not play in your consciousness. He might not play in your consciousness. But this Kitsuko Oto is just a title. It's not a name. It's a title for Priest King. Same thing. Priest King, Priest King, Priest King. New world for the coming of Christ to the new world. As he had described in the Book of Mormon. All right, all right, all right let's go. So the Khan is the serpent dynasty. All right. So the Khan is the dragon dynasty, the dragon dynasty that connected to the lands. Remember your sandwich between Atlantis and Lemuria. This goes back to the Mu. This goes back to the land you don't see no more. This priesthood that has survived, whose energy has been hijacked, whose ley lines and connections and crosses have been hijacked whose marks, whose signs, whose towels has been hijacked. We're still the natural energy of that which is created. We are the energy. We are the sequence we'll always be. We are that which they call dragon. Why? Why did they call you dragon? Let's see. Covering the Muslim walls where the serpentine motives chronologing, chronologing, the long history of this archaic Khan dynasty, one such motif depicted King Kaul engulfed within the protective coils of a 12-headed serpent, Nano Ka Khan, the totem animal of the Khan dynasty. Next to this illustration was a legend which stated that the 12 heads of the Nano Ka Khan represented the 12 Khan dynasties, which had collectively reigned over Mexico for 18,000 years. Prior to King Cole. Is this taught in your history books? Let's go. In order to date the existence of Cole, Le Plongeon followed clues to Trional, Trional manuscript of Mayan scripture. We got to dig on that Trional. And estimated that King, that the King reigned 16,000 years ago by adding 18,000 and 16,000 together. Le Plongeon Estimated that the first serpent dynasties in Mexico were dragon, cons, seeds, energy. We're just talking about the seed, the energy in Mexico were in existence at least 34,000 years ago. Soon after Le Pongeon's discovery, a good friend of the French archaeologist James Churchward, Churchward the Theoreticized or theorized that the Khan dynasty had been a colony of ancient Naga Maya from Mu. So now it's almost like you have a, a, a beef between the ancient Atlanteans and uh, this priesthood from Mu. 
that seems to be carrying out today, and one of them has been put to sleep. <laughs> Maybe the Atlantean, you know, hijack a Maxim. Oh, with the permission of the Pharaoh, you know, Atlantean hijacks today. You know what I'm saying? Are representing that which is putting their, uh, you know, other family to sleep. This made sense to the Pontian since he had heard legends of the Nagamai from his guides in Mexico. Church, church words theory was in, indirectly corroborated soon afterwards by a discovery made by another archaeologist, William Nevin, while sifting through an excavation in the area between Texcoco and Halua Pantla. Nevin found over 20,000 stone tablets which were covered with unusual symbols some of which were identical to the ones Churchward had seen covering the Nako, Nakal tablets in India. Uh-oh, we're talking about the Indias. Since the Mexican tablets were found in conjunction with the remains of three buried rooms, the first of which were estimated by Nevin to have belonged to a civilization which had existed at least 50,000 years ago, they were apparently synchronous with and perhaps relics of the ancient Khan dynasty and I'm asking you who is Wang Khan priest king and who are you that been put to sleep you've been put under amnesia given the tablets similarity to the Nikal tablets their creators i.e. the artisans of the Khan dynasty could definitely have been a branch of the Naga Maya Fumu you know we're just digging on the ancient cons, the cons, the cons. We're talking about the worldwide dragon culture. Once the serpents of wisdom, once the serpents of wisdom. Now, where do you hear this this this, this serpent of wisdom, man? We have to go back to the Papuva. We have to go back to the writings of the Quiche people. So we chill with all the play play. The Papuva preamble, this is the beginning of the ancient traditions of this place called Quiche. Quiche is a root word. The root or word root is used here to describe the beginning or foundation of the author's words concerning the history of the Quiche people. Root, like a plant from the root. These are the people from the root. Are you from the root? My people, are you still here? Do you keep rising? Do you wonder why you keep rising? Do you have the energy that comes from the root, from the dragon lines, from the dragon grid, from the energy, from the crossing? Are you the people of the cross, of the mark, of the root? The root of the tree? This is the beginning of the ancient traditions of the place called Quiche. Here we shall write. We shall begin to tell the ancient stories of the beginning, the origin of all that was done in the citadel of Quiche among the people of the Quiche nation. Here we shall gather the manifestation, the declaration, the account of the sowing and the dawning by the framer and the shaper. Remember, you've been ripped apart in religion. In Christianity, they gave you, you know what I'm saying, this lonely male. And in Islam, you know, you think you got this all, 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 all. But every time we're talking all, A-L, all. We're talking all, um. Now you have Allah, right? But these are the titles for the divine couple. Emyukane and XP. Yaakov, Yemen is translated their quiche names Alam and Kajulam as simply mother and father. So, oh, but then you get, you know, the twist in Christianity because, of course, you don't have the actual great father anymore, do you? You have Zeus. You have Zeus. You have a hijacked father. And in Islam, you have ISIS. 
You know, you got this ISIS today, and it's right in front of your eyes, and it's still the ISIS of yesterday. Your ISIS is still ISIS. It's the crescent. And these are the hijacks. Your mother and your father have been hijacked. You had a mother and a father. She who has born children. A more accurate translation of Alam. From the perfect aspect of the root word Al. A-L. To bear children. So the Al. When you hear Allah, it's from Alam. All is to bear children. In the cliche, we're just talking cliche. You know, that's all I can, you know, all, all we can come is from the root. Getting to the root of it all. Kings to Uno to go. The name of the male god, Kachalab, specifically indicates his having begotten male offspring. So the Kajalam from the father, you're the seed of your father, he only begets sons. He who has begotten sons. So your mother is she who has born children. Alam, Alam, to bear children. A-L, to bear children. He who has begotten sons. Your father, you're in the vibration. You are your father's seed. Your seed through Adam, the image, the sequence. The Adam is the image, the sequence, the frequency. You're the frequency today, pass from father to son. They couldn't stop that. They never stopped that seed. He who has begotten sons today goes right back to our creator, Allah. Frey Bartholomew. Listen up, man. This is very important because this is their shit. Fray Bartolome de las Casas wrote in the 16th century that the people of Guatemala worshipped as their principal gods, the Great Father and the Great Mother that were in heaven, apparently referring to this divine couple. We're talking about a unity. And what do we get right here? It says Father Domenico de Viso. So you got the Fray Bartolome. Now you got Father Domenico de Viso used their quiche names to refer to the God of the Old Testament. So he says this pair of gods, this divine couple, your mother and your father, your framer and your shaper. This pair of gods was so important. Let's get it bigger. This pair of gods was so important. Maybe that's too big. Yeah. Let me get it back. Let me get it back. All right. This pair of gods was so important. You're, you're framing your shaper. Your framer refers to one who makes something by putting things together. A building from stone, adobe, a meal from various ingredients. Your mother puts it together, right? She makes a house a home. Your father, your shaper, refers to one who makes something by modeling, i.e. molding uh, pottery from clay or sculpture from carved stone, thus giving shape to an otherwise amorphous substance. You are in the vibration that gives shape when you're in the frequency. What frequency are you in? That's your father. Your mother puts it all together once you're in in, in the flow. You know what I'm saying? Once you surf in the wave, man. Once you're in the frequency. Then you can put it together like a meal. The framer and shaper are the most frequently mentioned gods or powers involved in the creation of the world. Do not put any powers before us. Your mother and your father, this pair of gods, your mother and father, was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, Father Domenico de Viso used their quiche, their root names, to refer to the God of the Old Testament. That's from Carmach and Mangalak, 1983. So he's letting you know that there's a separation between the God of the Old Testament and the power of the New. 
He had to use their quiche names to refer specifically to the power of the Old Testament, the framer and shaper that you don't know no more because you got amnesia, you got wiped out, and they say convert or die, just take this Christianity, which was only an abstraction of your actual power because they split it in two and hijacked them both. And it was so important that soon after the Spanish conquest, Father Domenico de Vicio used their quiche names to refer to the power of the Old Testament, of the Torah. We're talking about he who has begotten sons, as they are called, along with Hanupu Pasum and Hanupu Coyote, Great White Bakari and Kai Coyote, Coyote. Sovereign and Kitzel. We're talking Kitzel, right? Serpent. I got a bed. Let me get it smaller, man. I got, you know, I'm going to make sure I get it right for y'all. Here we go. Here we go. We got him. All right. So he who has begotten sons. As they're called, so we got Sovereign and Kitzel Serpent. Kitzel Serpent. So this is another way to refer to the Creator or the Shaper. Heart of Lake and Heart of Sea. Creator of the Green Earth, that's Mother Earth. And Creator of the Blue Sky. I with my right hand, Rakwa, beat out the expanse of the sky. I beat out, I Rakwa, I beat out the... Expands of the heavens and spread them out. Shamayim, spread them out like a tent. I spread them out like a tent. We're talking about Isaiah, Isaiah 40, man. So, you know, the Most High beat it out. He spread it out like a tent. He is the creator of the blue sky. Your mother, creator of the green earth. They're all one. It's one unity. It's all one. You know what I'm saying? But we don't see it that way. We haven't been presented that way. We're only talking about sovereign. And Kitzel Serpent. And we're referring to the serpent as a dragon. Because we're talking about the worldwide dragon culture. And you've been put to sleep, Negro. Why are they so afraid of serpents? Why are they so afraid of these dragons? And why did they have to hijack the dragon lines? The worldwide dragon culture, once the serpents of wisdom of Lemuria and Atlantis had succeeded in founding colonies and kingdoms throughout the earth. The dragon culture they had brought with them from the motherlands quickly established itself as a worldwide phenomenon for millennia thereafter or until the modern Christian era. The elements of the dragon culture could be found as an integral part of most of the major empires and countries around the world. So they said, oh, man, you, there's some snake worshiping, sun worshiping demons. They're coming over, killing and stealing, calling you a sun worshiping, snake worshiping demon. Well, I guess if the sun, you know, uh, you know, naturally heals you, if the sun, um, you know, pretty much only rocks with you <laughs> and never comes out for them. Then when they see you, they'll say, man, they, these people get powered up by the sun. They're not asking you about your philosophy about the sun. They just see that the sun chooses you, that you have gold and you have sun. And to them, you just must be some sun worshiping a demon, demon serpent people. Right. But they're coming with the energy of the venomous snakes. They didn't ask you for you to explain how Hawaii has established this beautiful sun to give you the elements that you need, the energy, the information you need, that you see it, you know, and, and see the greatness of Hawaii through the creation as you are created and as the sun was created for you by your creator. They didn't ask you. They just said, oh, the sun is rocking with these people. Sun, 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 go, go, go. Serpent, 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 right? We have to flip everything we've been taught and everything we've been told. So we're talking about the, you know, until modern Christianity, the elements of the dragon culture could be found, you know, pretty much everywhere. The elements of the dragon culture, there were several. There were seven 
principal elements of the worldwide dragon culture. They included the construction of megalithic temples, pyramids, dragon communities, over dragon lairs. Now, we're going to dodge a hijack because obviously, you know, everyone got the hijack, the celestial hijack, you know, all this stuff like that. We know we're talking mounds, you know, we got whatever the case is. Either way, we're talking dragon lairs. Now, this is a different, you know, philosophy when it comes. You never really connect the Negro with dragon lairs, but yet they're calling you Nagas and Niggas and Nagas for a reason. And we're only talking about what they're calling serpents or what we're calling dragons or what we're really calling energy. We're really just talking energy, frequency and vibration and something they don't have. And I'll show you why. Observance of universal burial custom to preserve the dragon body. Uh, the observance, the observance of dragon calendars determined by the movement of celestial dragons. All right, all right. Rule of a rule by a priest king who was an embodiment of the prime, primeval primeval dragon and referred to as a dragon, the twins, or a soul of spirit in, enveloped in matter. So we're talking about priest king. Veneration of a dragon creator of the universe. Dragon creator of the universe. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Great White Picari and Koti, Sovereign and Kitzel, Colt, Kitzel, Serpent. Serpent is also dragon. So we're talking about a dragon creator. What dragon creator doesn't literally mean a dragon. We're talking in a certain frequency. And when you talk frequency, that's when you start to break all this stuff down to see how they blasted you apart. You start to find yourself again. You start to find yourself again. All right. So construction of megalithic temples, pyramids, and dragon communities over dragon lairs, dragon lairs, or, and gardens of Eden. <laughs> now, this is interesting. We're surfing this way, man. So, you know. When the serpents of wisdom left the motherlands, they traveled along the earth's etheric highway of dragon lines to vortexual intersections or dragon's lairs. All right. And I know they got it. You know, uh, you got the link. You go through it. They got some maps, you know, showing you uh, South America and all that. And this is why they call it, you know, the land of the snake and the serpent this and all this stuff like that. We're speaking English. We never call it a serpent. We don't speak serpent. We never said the word serpent. We never said the word dragon. So get out the mind of a hijack. This is what they're interpreting. And they're afraid of something. And they took down something. And something hasn't been here for a while. They're, <laughs> they're scared shitless of something's return. And it has everything to do with you. The Naga. The people of this frequency. Of this energy. Listen. We're talking dragon lairs and garden of Eden. Surf the wave and see if we, see what we can connect to press the jump. When the serpents of wisdom left the motherlands, all right, we're talking Mu, all right, they traveled along the earth's etheric highways of dragon lines to vortexual intersections or dragon lairs, dragon's lairs. These high powered vortexes were naturally occurring, Garden of Edens. These high-powered vortexes were naturally occurring gardens of Edens, places of creation on the Earth's surface, where the male and female principles united to produce an abundance of life force. Where the male and female principles united, framer and shaper united, to produce an abundance of life force. This is what they took from you when they took down the dragon. Remember the movie, The Last Dragon, Bruce Leroy, Love the Uno. The Last Dragon, man. The Last Dragon. You were the last dragon. They are the venomous snake. You are the fi fiery flying serpent. Who was that? The brazen, the fiery flying serpent devouring the venomous snakes. They're the reptiles. They're the venomous snakes. You're the dragon, the fiery flying serpent. Now, yeah. again, this book is called The Return of the Serpents of Wisdom. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Let me see if we can get the you know the context table of contents is crazy. Again, love to the family indigenous Kiwata. Man, who was we? Man, was it chapter one? It came with so much drop. All this got a lot of drop in it, man. Cause you know it's not what they're gonna teach you, man. So the serpents of wisdom many times they get that baby. Make sure we got it. All right, doing good, doing good. How you feeling? How you feel? This is interesting, man. So, you know, don't you know, you know, just, just surf the wave, man. You know, forget what you think you know for a second. Many times during the course of history, certain individuals have come forward claiming to have realized the purpose and goal of existence. Though arduous, arduous spiritual disciplines, these masters have successfully united the male and female principles within themselves, raised the inner transformative fire serpent from its seat at the base of the spine, the kundalini, and awakened the consciousness of love within their hearts. For these rare individuals, the evolutionary cycle of spiritual transformation has been completed. Such enlightened men and women have reached the goal of all spiritual paths and have become androgynous spiritual wisdoms while, ex while existing within male or female gender sp specific forms. They are both male and female, spirit and matter fully united in one body. The I am of the individual self has fully united with the unlimited spiritual self or God and affirmation of I am that. I am everything. I am my, I am my father are one. I am my father are one. Continually resounds within their hearts. I am, in symbolic terms, the eagle, the spirit, the male principle has fully united with the snake, matter, ego, female principle, and they have become serpents of wisdom, which is, you know, gives you an interesting take on the eagle thing and the whole, the whole American eagle with the uh, snake in it, all right? Now listen up, as fully conscious spirit, as fully conscious spirit inhabiting a physical form, the serpents of wisdom wield unlimited serpent wisdom and powers. Now listen up, Negro Naga. Naga, listen up, Naga. Naga. We're talking about the Naga. We're talking about the serpent. We're talking about the dragon. They can't claim this. And you need to listen up what you have that they don't have. As fully conscious spirit inhabiting a physical form, the serpents of wisdom wield unlimited serpent or dragon energy, wisdom, and powers, including the ability to materialize any physical object at will. They dwell within immutable physical bodies which can survive for hundreds of years. Remember, we used to live for hundreds of years, right? Although they experience the world primarily out of an immortal fourth dimensional dragon body, an etheric shield. So you have some, you, when you're created immortal, that's what they're calling, quote unquote, your dragon body, man. That's your high level energy, man, your dragon body. You are your dragon body. You just forgot. This is what they're calling the immortal fourth dimensional dragon body, an etheric sheath. An etheric sheath, we're talking about ether, man. Which surrounds and interpenetrates the physical body. Contained within the dragon body are the supernatural senses of clairvoyance, clairaudience, tele telepathy, omnis omniscience, omnipresence which allows the serpents to remain in continual communication with the subtle realms, subtle realms, which surround and inter and interpenetrate the physical plane. Man, I know that sounds like some Phil Valentine drop right there, but you got to listen up, nigga. Nigga, naga, because this is all about what's popping with you. This might got something to do with this eclipse thing. This might got a lot to do with a lot. You're talking about the fourth dimensional dragon body, an etheric sheath, which surrounds and interpenetrates the physical body. Contained within the dragon body are the supernatural senses of clairvoyance, clairaudience, telepathy, om omniscience, omnipresence, which allows the serpent to remain in continual communication with the subtle realms which surround and interpenetrate the physical plane. So you got all your connectivity 
when you wake up. You got all your connectivity regarding the physical plane, not planet. If they so desire, they can extricate the dragon body from its physical sheath and travel within it to distant locations. So you can leave this dragon body or, you know, you know, you could just dip out. You could just dip out, man. It's, you know, that's all it's saying. You could, you, you could bounce and go places other people can't go. At the death, at death, listen up what happens at death. At death, the serpents of wisdom can permanently detach the dragon body from its material sheath and relocate within it to one of many physical realms of the immortals. So because you got this dragon body at death, you can detach from the material bullshit and relocate to the paradises within your dragon body already programmed because you're immortal already. I mean, is that what's up? You know, then it gets it to surface of wisdom, global organization. So I'm going to leave this drop, man. You know, we're just talking about dragon lairs and garden of Eden, man. So all I'm saying is that when the serpents of wisdom left the motherlands, they traveled along Earth's etheric. We're talking about the ether dragon body, highway of dragon lines, the vortexual intersections or dragon layers. Is this play play? These high power vortexes were naturally occurring gardens of Eden, place of places of creation on the Earth's surface where the male and female principles united to produce an abundance of life force. Right, so such places were recognized by the serpents as or dragons as ideal locations for civilizations to prosper. Now, all snakes and serpents aren't the same. And this is when we start to look into which one of these, you know, which which of these cultures really were rocking with the this fiery flying dragon and which we're talking about this snake. You know, what I'm saying a lot of the Egypt stuff, you see a lot of snakes on their stuff, you know, and then a lot of the Maya stuff, you see a lot of dragons, you know what I'm saying? So you know, interesting thing. Oh, yeah, all right, so I want to get into some other stuff, man. But, yeah, man, it gets deep, man. Home of the servants, man. I know I got some math. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you got a map. It's talking about North America here. It's called, us, you know, the land of the snake clan. And over here, it has the kids of Kultus. And then in South America, it's got the Amarus. Then you got, you know, those are all the dragon communities. Dragon communities, man. Not snake communities, dragon communities. Not serpent communities, dragon communities. We're talking about energy. We're talking about the dragon lines. We're talking about the dragon lairs. And this is the other side. All right, so these are the dragon communities over there. The same. All right. So what's the connection, man? I mean, you know, is this play play? You know, is this something to look into, man? Is this, you know, you tell me, man. We're talking about the life force and structure. All right, let's get back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I wanted. Dragon communities, when the serpent life force spiraled down one of the megalithic homes and met the ground, some of its life-producing essence was transferred into a network of dragon lines, which branched off from the conductive structure. This essence then traveled within the Earth's etheric corridors for many miles in all directions. So these particular, you know, you know what I'm saying? They were using the golden proportion. They were using the fire. We're talking about harmonics, frequency, and it would spiral down into the ground and then branch out in all directions in order to harness this dispersing life force and not let it dissipate. The cup, the colonizing serpents strategically set dwellings and buildings along its path, pathways and then tied them together in geometrical grid formations in the form of crosses triangles six-pointed stars and spirals how does this relate to what they put in the biblios man and what came first this or the biblios man serpent or the dragon man <laughs> so in the form of crosses these grid formations cross they were crossing crosses crosses kitsukoto crosses Joshua crosses, Jesus, no, we're talking geometric grids, man, not Jesus, crosses, Naga, Nega, Naga, Nagush, King, Priest Kings, 
in the form of crosses, triangles, six pointed stars, and spirals, these geometric circuits were able to retain the emanations of central megalith while circulating its nourishing life force to all the structures within the grid. Collectively, all the structures comprising such grid produce self-sufficient dragon communities. Are you in a dragon community now or are you in the ghetto? Have we lost all of our, uh, you know, all of our dragon swagger? Have we lost our dragon? Have we lost our fire? Have we lost our dragon communities, my people? All right, man. I want to get back into this um, little of this Max Spires. I played an intro to this because I didn't know he had, you know, they already got to him, man. Uh, you know, I guess he was assassinated. I'll play this little clip right quick. And then I want to get uh, a little bit more about what we dropped about that, uh, you know, thought splitting consciousness. You know, get that last drop. Let's go. Brothers and sisters, the death of Max Spires appears to be natural, they said, but the facts say otherwise. All credit goes to CD Fury channel. All right, peace to CD Fury for this presentation. Please be vigilant and sober as the enemy is devouring those whose names are not written in the land's book of life. All right, man, you, you dig on it. You dig on it, British man. British conspiracy researcher named Max Spears reportedly died in Poland after vomiting black liquid. His mother, Vanessa Bates, claims that before he died, he sent her a text message saying, Your boy's in trouble. If anything happens to me, investigate. She claims Max was exposing who was dangerous in the government and entertainment world. Max was 39 and found dead on a sofa this year, July 16th which makes this news story kind of old and makes me wonder why news outlets didn't report his death until October the 16th. Polish investigators claim he died of natural causes, but his mom isn't buying it, and says she'll be doing further investigation in the UK if she's unsatisfied with the results of the post-mortem examination. So what really happened to Max Spears? Well, I did get a chance to listen to some of his interviews, and I think I could shed some light on his death. In his last interview, which was recorded on July the 12th, he was very weird. He could barely talk, and at one point, he almost fell asleep. The interviewer had to take a break and let him jump on a trampoline before continuing the interview. I thought continuing the interview was crazy because it made it seem like the interviewer was desperate or inconsiderate. Personally, I would have rescheduled it for another day. I wouldn't continue interviewing someone that is slurring their words, could barely talk, and is falling asleep. Most of the questions Max didn't even answer. He either said he didn't know or he sidestepped the question altogether. All right, man. I want to get into it. So, you know, rest in power, man. You know what I'm saying? Try to drop some drop, man. Um, you know, get that last drop because we got like 40 minutes of this already. I want to get about five or six minutes more, man, and go back into what we're talking about with these cons. And something very important that he's about to bring up, man. Again, love to AD for this drop. Surfing the wave, my bros, man. Tribe up, drop nation, let's go. That's the snake swallowing its own tail. It's it's uh, it's an infinite. So 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 essentially, human beings on this planet are ca have got caught in a time loop, and there is once again an opening to leave. So we're in a time loop. Remember, they killed this man. You know. Spin up black goo, so they really got him. So you might want to listen. You might want to surf the wave. You got, you know, he said the human beings are in a time loop. Remember, remember the whole projects, the, you know, the, the, the Mars and Montauk and all that separating, you know what I'm saying, Se you know, separating their own consciousness and then the whole trauma of all the traumatic stuff that they did in these experiments. They did to you when they rolled up on you in your land. They put you in a traumatized state. They split your consciousness. They created another you. We're suffering a ripple effect of the split of the consciousness. And they put the matrix in the split. And they fed you 440 and GMO everything to feed that other part of you so you don't connect to, to your actual self. But finding yourself is what you do. Finding yourself is what you came here for. Finding yourself is what your ancestors knew that you'd be able to accomplish. 
to get out of that beast mind, that traumatized mind, that fearful mind. Connect back to your dragon. Choose up. Get get back on your grid lines with mountains, with trees, man. So, all right, he says you in a time loop, man. How you going to break it, man? You got to flow. Let's go. We had an opening to leave when um, 13,000 years ago when Atlantis fell. Uh, we didn't make it. So then we, 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 we had to start again. Now so now there's another opening. Does this got anything to do with the great American eclipse? Is it an opening that they think they can leave? <laughs> Or is it an opening for you to wake your ass up? Let's go. Now, again, there is a window opening where we can leave and separate and, and get out of the time loop that we're in. But they are pushing... Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Okay, so, 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 so we're at a point. Um, they are... Um, they're upping their game themselves. They're upping their, game, their, their, their rituals and their game themselves. That's why the, um, the Baal temples have been opened in Times Square and in um, Trafalgar Square. Now, if you look at Times Square, you have TS, and then you have Trafalgar Square, you have TS. Well, in basic numerology, TS is 39 as well. Um, this is a very, very, very important number. Um, 39 being important because 93 is the number of the sun. Because we say that, that I'm not sure if I believe it, but um, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, uh, the sun is said to be 93 million miles away. So he's telling you that's bullshit, but it doesn't matter. Let's go. Now the sun is life-giving force. The sun is uh, all life-giving and uh, keep, sustains us and grows, uh, grows us food and uh, is, uh, you know, keeps us alive. So 39 would be a reversal of the sun. Um, so we have TS and 39. So Baal is, is, is the... The sun would be Christ consciousness. Baal would be Luciferian consciousness. So they're using numerology to reverse around, open these gates for three days to try and let Baal, this energy Baal, which is essentially Luciferian energy in, um, to continue the agenda. Okay. So and what does that got to do with the moon? He said everything's reversed. Remember, the moon has an opposite principle of light. The moon does not reflect the sun. The moon is its own luminary, and it cools the surface instead of warms the surface. If it did reflect the sun's light, it would still warm the surface and use the same property. It wouldn't have an opposite property. But the sun, you know, look up moon tests, you know, all throughout YouTube. It's a, there's a lot of them. People doing the th thermometer, putting the moon out, putting the uh, thermometer out in the moonlight, and then putting it in the moon shade, hiding it from the moonlight. And every single time, the thermometer that's in the moonlight is cooler because the moonlight cools surfaces. It's the opposite property of light than the sun. He said the sun is 93, the moon is 30, then 39. So now it's like that's their, that's their light. They're moon people. You're sun people. And they called you sun worshipers because you get energized and, 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 and filled with life from that which the creator has given to nourish you. He gave you the sun to nourish you. Yes, it fills you with life. Do you worship it or do you know that it comes and has it's been created for you? You were created last, right? The sun was created before you. The star, all, all that was created before you because everything that was created before you was created for you it was made perfect the same way that you would make it you know what i'm saying you got you know uh someone very important coming over you want everything to be perfect for them you want to create the perfect atmosphere that's what the creator did for you he created the perfect atmosphere then he put you here now you control the lines you control the energy you control the dragon lines you are the dragon people the cons the Americans, the Americans, the go. So there, there is a three day, they do everything in threes. Three is very important because three is the Trinity. It's the most powerful figure because um, of its strength. 
um, because of its strength. A pyramid or a triangle is the most um, sturdy, powerful. Um, uh, the power, the power of three, is the most powerful. Okay, so there is a there is a genuine attempt to pull this deity Baal um, into. Uh, uh, they're using uh, New York and they're using London. Uh, London is, is, is going to be the new Babylon. If you, if you look at it, it's Babylon done. Okay, so you have um, London going to be the new center of uh, power. Even though it has been for a long time, it's going to be overtly an open center of power of the planet. So, a little secret here. So you have the two, two lines that came out of the, of, of, of the Garden of Eden. You have the Cain line and the Abel line. Cain and Abel line. Okay. Um, what we've been taught, once again they did a reversal, because this is what they do. Once again they hmm. did a reversal. They told us that, that Cain was the bad and that Abel was the good. Okay. But Abel it is an anagram and if you just switch the letters around from Abel you'll get you'll get Baal oh okay um, uh, just s switching uh, over slightly um, oh, so oh, oh, Facebook oh, oh. Oh. Um, the symbol for Facebook I wish I had it one more time um, London going to be the new center of uh, power even though it has been for a long time, it's going to be overtly an open center of power of the planet. So, a little secret here. So you have the two, two lines that came out of the, of, of, of the Garden of Eden. You have the Cain line and the Abel line. Cain and Abel line. Okay. Um, what we've been taught, once again they did a reversal because this is what they do. Once again, they did a reversal. They told us that, that Cain was the bad and that Abel was the good. Okay, But Abel is an anagram. And if you just switch the letters around from Abel, you'll, go, you'll get Baal. Bang! Body bag, Daniel. Body bag for the illusion. I mean, if you had to produce a book and publish a book and give it to the people that were dead fucking asleep, would you switch the characters around just to mix shit up? Or would you say, nah, man, nah, man. No, the Most High would never allow them to mess with our book. The Most High expects you to wake your ass up and realize you are the book. These writings are about you. You are the living word, breath, frequency, energy. No book defines you. No book will ever define you. You predate writing. Thought is sound. You used to be able to hear it. In the right frequency when you're tuned up, charged up. We're charging back up, man. You're going to have to step way out of the illusion. When they flipped your map and they flipped you upside down and north to south and east to west and you don't think they would flip Cain and Abel? So, a little secret here. So you have the two, two lines that came out of the, of, of, of the Garden of Eden. You have the Cain line and the Abel line. Cain and Abel line. Okay. Um, what we've been taught, once again they did a reversal because this is what they do. Once again, they did a reversal. They told us that, that, that Cain was the bad and that Abel was the good. Okay, But Abel is an anagram. And if you just switch the letters around from Abel, you'll, go, you'll get Baal. So, if we're just surfing the wave and we're not letting a book define us because we know our creator exists and we exist, so there you have it. Um, can we say, uh, all right, Abel is Baal, and Cain, Khan, Cain, Khan, Cain, Khan, Cain, Khan, Cain, Khan, Cain, Khan, Khan, Cain is Khan, Khan is Cain. The story of Cain is a flipped, reverse 
syncretinized, massacred story of the cons that the Baal is invading the cons or wiping out the cons or massacring the cons. Abel's killing Cain. Baal is killing the cons. It's not just a story of one person, Cain and Abel. It's a story of a nation of bays and owls, bay owls, bays and owls. <laughs> it's a family affair. It's a family affair. And I choose you, baby. I choose. Oh, come on, man. Y'all got to feel this in your soul. Because the bay owls, we're talking bays and owls. We're talking tribal wars and Moabs and Bays and Els and Baals. Did the Baals slay their brothers? Did the Baals, Abel, the Abel, the Baal, did the Baals slay their brothers in many various forms and fashions? The Canes, the Khans, the Wang Khans. I mean, are we just talking cons? I mean, one more time. Right. So, a little secret here. So, you have the two two lines that came out of the, of, of of the Garden of Eden. You have the Cain line and the Abel line. Cain and Abel line. Okay. Um, what we've been taught. Once again, they did a reversal because this is what they do. Once again, they did a reversal. They told us that that Cain was the bad. And that Abel was the good. So that means that Cain is the good or cons are the good. You know how ignorant people always used to just yell and be like, Y'all ain't y'all ain't no Hebrews, y'all y'all ain't Israelites, y'all y'all the seed of Cain. Y'all the seed of Cain. Are they really saying that we were the seed or are the seed of the cons? The Americans? Cain is con. Is Cain con? In their folklore, when they folklore you, put it in English, published it in their in their publishing houses, and gave you a remix, an Iverson crossover, broke all of our ankles. Did they flip Cain and Abel? Okay, but Abel is an anagram, and if you just switch the letters around from Abel, you'll get you'll get Baal. <laughs> you get Baal, Baal. Bay L, Bays and L slaying their brothers. Wow. I mean, you know, do we have to kind of, you know, relook at Genesis a little bit? Kind of really surf the wave and get the babies out. And doesn't that change quite a bit when you dig on it? Man, you just get all over here, surf the wave, man. Get all here, surf the wave. You know, we're just building it up brick by brick. I hope you're enjoying the vibe, sweets, man. Join the drop shop, drop tuna package, man. Let us let us tune you up, man. Get that drop chat, man. We got PDFs dropping. Sometimes, you know, I know I, I, if I take too long to drop it in the library, a lot of times I drop the PDF right there in the chat room. So I am going to be dropping so much more in the library real soon. Man, just keep vibing, man. Keep vibing with us. We'll be coming right live at ya pretty soon, man. And this is where you'll find us, man. You know, if we're not on this tube thing. It's Google stuff. You'll find us over here, man. In our own little secluded alcove. Because we're just talking about the cons. We're talking about the dragon communities, man. The serpents of wisdom, they say. And what do they say about you? As fully conscious spirit inhabiting a physical form, the serpents of wisdom, the naga, the nigga, the naga. Wield unlimited serpent wisdom and powers, including the ability to materialize any physical object at will. Is that what they're afraid of, nigga, naga? Is that why they keep you asleep? They dwell within immutable, immutable physical bodies, which can survive for hundreds of years, although they experience the world primarily out of an immortal immortal fourth dimension dragon body so you 
experience the world primarily through your dragon body, your fourth dimension dragon body. You're the people. You're the dragon. You're the last dragon. An etheric sheath, an etheric sheath, an etheric sheath, which surrounds and interpenetrates the physical body. Contained within the dragon body are the supernatural senses, a clairvoyance, clairaudience, telepathy, om omnis omniscience, omniscience, and omnipresence, which allow the serpents to remain in continual communication with the subtle realms which surround and interpenetrate the physical plane, all connectivity. You do it, man. You try it, man. Try this out, man. If they so desire, they can extricate the dragon body from its physical sheath and travel within it to distant locations throughout the universe. At the death, at death, when you die, Naga, the serpents of wisdom, the dragons, the Nagas can permanently detach the dragon body from the material sheath and relocate into one of its many paradise realms of the immortals because you live forever naga man we're just talking about the nagas man we're just talking about the cons man we're just talking about the ancient con or serpent dynasties we're digging on it man because the con is the cane, is the con. I mean, you could put an A, you could put an I in it if you want. But is Cane con? And did they flip like the cat just said? Cain and Abel. So Cain is the good guy. I know you've been brainwashed. But Cain is the good guy. Con is the good guy. You're an Mary con. You're the copper color race found here. And this is Genghis Khan. In case you forgot. Oh, hold up. I didn't even finish reading the joint. Somebody didn't. Y'all should have told me. Drop. You didn't finish reading the bottom. Check this out. So it says, Batu Khan stabbed him to, get to death for his re refusal to do obeisance to Genghis Khan's shrine. So he refused to bow down to this pagan ritual. It says, note that Genghis Khan is depicted as a black man, painted by Russian painter V.S. Smirnov, 1883. Note that Genghis Khan is depicted as a black man. Note that Genghis Khan is a fucking black man. He is family. And this was a family con on con war. He warred with his uncle. He warred with Prester John, priest king. They're all Hebrews, if you want to look at it that way, in that lens. But these are all Nagas. <laughs> and they hijacked the Khan, and then they themselves were hijacked. They themselves were betrayed, just like they betrayed us. This is Genghis Khan, and who do you think is the Wan Khan? Who do you think is the priest king, Prester John, Wong, Khan, Khan, Genghis Khan called him Khan father. Genghis Khan called him Wan father. And all we ask it, man, and all we been asking, man, all the way back from New Jack City, Jack. Is did a black man, Genghis Khan, depicted as a black man, huh? Did a black man discover the fountain of youth? Who is Prester John? Or, as they say, El Presta Juan, Emperor de los Abyssinios, Emperor of Abyssinia or Ethiopia. And we're talking about the Ethiopia of the farthest India. We're talking about the Americans. Who is Prester John? Is he King David? Is he Moses? <laughs> Who's Preston John, man? Man, let's get a little bit more of this. We're talking about the souks. What do the souks have to say about this land? What do the souks have to say about Peru? 
Let's get it right here. As we get ready for our dismount. The Souk Snakes. Alright. We're talking about the dragons, the Nagas. This Peru, 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 Perusalem, Perusalem, Peru, Perusalem. This Peru is the land of our beginning. This is what the indigenous Octopton is saying, man. Not what the Christian is telling them to say. Naga, this Peru is the land of your beginning. Where we went from the old red land even before it sank. Because this land is as old as the dragon land of the fire god. And they put in parentheses Atlantis. Fire god, huh? Kitzel. He who begot sons is there called Hanupu Possum, Hanupu Coyote, Great White Bakari, Coyote, Sovereign, and Kitzel Serpent, or Dragon, or Fire. We're just trying to tie it all together. These words were spoke by Shooting Star, Chief of the Sioux Tribe, during the visit to Peru. So we're talking about this Peru is the land of our beginning where we went from the old red land even before it sank because this land is as old as the dragon land of the fire god. Let's get it from here. Shooting Star's ancestors were the turtles. So we're talking about Turtle Island, huh? A branch of who they're calling fire worshipping Atlantean serpents. Well, let them tell it. According to their ancient records, following the destruction of the old red land, the turtles traveled on ships to the Caribbean islands, originally settled by the Carib. Serpents from Atlantis, we're talking dragons, and the continent of South America before finally arriving at the Mississippi Delta region. Here they were met by their ancient brothers, the Iroquois serpent. The name Iroquois means serpent, who followed them up the river in snakeskin covered boats to a territory in the far north after settling in their new homeland. The turtles became known as Lakota with the K sound of the serpent, and the souks became snakes, meaning souks meaning snakes, according to the late Dakota of the elk, ex, extinct elk tribe of the Algonquins, the long journey of the two tribes is commem commemorated at Serpent Mound in Ohio, which depicts a turtle leading a snake. The Serpent Mound in Ohio depicts a turtle le leading a snake. Is this waking you up to what they tried to spook you out about? Snakes and snakes and this and this and that. And this is what they're afraid of. This is what they try to make you the savages, serpent worshippers, sun worshippers. Because the sun chooses you and not them. Because the creator created the sun for you and not them. And this was commem commemorated at the serpent mound. What they're calling the serpent mound. These are the dragon lines, man. This is the dragons, man. This is the Peru. This is the land of the beginning. We're talking about the old red land. Remember the book of the beginnings, man. Love to pop go. Oh, wow, wow. This great drop right here, which we're talking Kitsukoto as Moses. And this goes right into Kitsukoto, you know, his connection to Joshua. Moses as Hawamak, Ahuamak, as Shu and Anhar in Egyptian mythology. And Moses and Joshua conducted their people with the solar orb. Around the circle of signs, overcoming the opposing powers postulated by the early men. So in Toltec mythology, Huimak or Hawamak or Huimakzin and Quetzalcoatl conducted their people through the pilgrimage and wanderings recorded in the picture writings. Hawamak, like Moses, 
wrote the code of laws for the nation, and conducted the civil government, Kitsukooto, in relation to Hawamat, plays the part of Joshua. Kitsukooto plays the part of Joshua. Kitsukooto plays the part of Hawashua. And Joshua became their Jesus, which is why they tried to hijack him with the Mormons, tried to hijack him as Jesus, but they couldn't fit in the dragon, they couldn't fit in the serpent. So they related that more to Moses, but it's really connected to Joshua, who we're just talking about a priest king. We're talking about a lineage, a title of passing of priest kings, priests. We're talking about the tribes of Moses. Who's pressed the job, man? Who's pressed the job, man? Who got the fountain of youth on deck? Who got the fountain of youth? Who got the fountain of youth on deck? Who got the fountain of youth, man? We're just talking press the job. We're just digging on it bit by bit, man. Again, they're trying to hijack. They're trying to hijack Kitsukoto for the coming of Christ to the new world. But they can't fit him in. They can't squeeze it in. You know what I mean? Hold on, where's my job? Where's my job? Here we go. So Kitsukoto in relationship to Hawaii plays a plays the role of Joshua. Kitsukoto is Joshua. When Kitsukoto began to give the laws instead of Hawama, he sent a crier to the top of the mountain of Alcry, whose voice could be heard for 3,000 miles around. Joshua follows Moses as the leader of Israel and instructs the people to go up against Jericho, his mountain of Alcry, and sell it with a shout that ought to be heard at an equal distance as it was loud enough to make the walls fall flat. The Old Red Land was the name of the original home in the north from where the Toltecs migrated. Their leader, Kitsukoto, wore a long robe marked with crosses, crosses.